Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and uh, we are on our fourth segment, uh, correcting the mistakes that uh, Tobia Singer is making to the, um, well, really, he's preaching to the Christian world, trying to correct them on their Bible, saying that all these things are false, uh, or in this case here, uh, the, a, a New Testament corruption, he calls it. And, and, and listen, in all sincerity, especially on this message here, I, I really hope, Tovia, this will help you. Uh, the, this, these are things that you really, and I have to say this to my friends that are listening and those that maybe that follow Tovia now that, that might be listening as well. Tovia is a brilliant man. He really is. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to take away from him his brilliance, but the problem is, a lot of these things are more spiritual to begin with. It takes deep diving and understanding to really to pull out uh, the meaning that's written here in the scriptures to start with. But I clearly, each time, by the grace of God, I'll prove to you where he's wrong on what he's saying. And, and, in, and in all sincerity, I believe that maybe Tovia just doesn't know himself. So... And this one is very serious. Tovia just put this one out here on November the 8th. So uh, it's only a couple of days old there. I saw it just, in fact, eight hours after it came out. And uh, where he's quoting from where, where Jesus, he's actually quoting from Jesus, the gospel that Jesus uh, speaks about uh, David uh, calling, um, uh, let's see, this is uh, Matthew 22, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. And so we're going to dive into this because Tovia clearly is, he's being challenged with the question. And, uh, and of course, the call, the people that call into the show that he's on want answers. How do you respond to Christians that say this or to say that? And a lot of times Tovia, he, he makes a very, very powerful argument. And even on this one, again, he made a very powerful argument. But he still was wrong. And I'm going to give you the documentation to support where he's wrong. And, uh, and hopefully, like I said, I hope it helps Tovia. I sincerely hope it helps him. Um, so let's go right into this and we'll take a look at what he's saying here. My friends, go back to the original. The church is a magician. It's a bad magician. Go back to the original. I do want to address this real quick, and I, I think I've done it before, but we're going to address it once again oh, yeah. here. And, and let me just say this real quick. Tovia loves to say, go back to the original. And then he takes you to the Masoretic text of the Hebrew version of the, of the Old Testament uh, when he's using that. And the Hebrew, the Masoretic text was put together roughly between the 7th and 10th century uh, definitely it is not the original. If you compare it to the Dead Sea Scrolls, there are thousands of differences between the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, version of the Tanakh, uh, which is the Old Testament, uh, and that of what the Masoretic text has. Not to mention the, the rabbis added the vowels, uh, or didn't add the vowels, but added vowels to the, the, the particular, the Tanakh to begin with. And in many cases, they've completely made a sham out of the Word of God. Uh, and one particular instance I've shared with you guys on multiple occasions, uh, and this is where, I think it's in the book of Numbers, uh, maybe we should look at that real quick in light of this, because uh, Tovia loves to do that, go back to the original, go back to the original. He says that quite frequently. And the Masoretic text is not the original. Uh, let's just face it. I mean, I appreciate, you know, the Hebrew uh, Bible. I do. But even when I'm really trying to dig deeper, I'm going back to the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, and the Dead Sea Scrolls are not even the original. I mean, let's face it. Do we have an original of Moses' writing in the Paleo-Hebrew? No, we don't. We don't have it nowhere. So, you know, that, that, that poses a real problem. Um, but, um, this is one very good example right here where the vowel point is completely wrong. Uh, it's obviously wrong. 
And uh, so just so we can kind of clarify this, because Tovia is going to make an issue of vowels. Uh, and so I want to bring that out to you right now, especially if you're one of Tovia's students and you're listening to our broadcast here. You have here, um, oh, okay, and, and we saw there the Nephilim, B'nai Anak, the sons of Anak, mean ha Nephilim. They now they use the vowel points, the the dargish right here underneath the fe to make it look like it's still Nephilim. But clearly, if the Masoretic text is a good copy of the original, going back, say, from what Moses wrote in the in the uh, Paleo Hebrew, then Moses never spelt it the same way that he spelt it to the sons. The sons. We have the yod in there. The yod naturally would make it hanaflim, uh, which we would know would be the children of the fallen angels, but uh, or the sons, uh, you know, that they are the fallen angels, you know, the fallen ones, but uh, and they are from Enoch being their father, but it's clearly showing that Enoch was min hanafalim. Uh, there is no yod in the middle there. There is nothing there, but they put a vowel there to make it look as if it should have been there. But Moses didn't spell it that way. So if Moses didn't spell it that way, Moses is implying that Enoch's father was a real fallen angel. But they do this because why? Rabbis want to assume that the fallen angels never had anything else to do with mankind on earth after the flood. Totally false. That's what gives this scripture more power is the fact that it does prove that the fallen angels again were having children even after the flood. So, so something that's important to bring out here. So I just wanted to kind of deal with that issue right up front there. And also, like I said, these vowel points, the Masoretic text, that is one of the biggest problems with the Masoretic text is the vowel points. Uh, and many times, maybe it does serve a great purpose for helping, for keeping pronunciation, etc. But, you know, let's face it, even in English, go back two, three hundred years ago in English. Boy, we don't sound nothing like what our early English ancestors sounded like just going back a few hundred years. I mean, my gosh, read read the uh, the old King James Version of the Bible or, or, or even worse yet, go back to the 1611 version of the Bible. Look at the English in there. That's really difficult to read, um, you know. So imagine Hebrew now. We are 2,000 years since Jesus' time. Yeah, I, I don't think so. All right, let's listen in to Rabbi uh, Singer here with uh, William Hall. And uh, look, I'm not here to beat up on these guys. I'm just here. I want to help you guys to get the truth out. And so when I see the mistakes there, and listen, there's a lot of mistakes on a lot of everything that he does. So, but I don't have time to do all of them, but I am trying to do what I can uh, as we go along. Listen, I'm on the air. Please tell us your name. Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is um, Bob. I'm calling from Rochester, New York. Bob, welcome. Go right ahead with your question, sir. Yeah, my question was um, Psalm 110 is being quoted in um, Matthew 22, 41 46. And um, the Pharisees asked Jesus, um, or he asked the Pharisees, what do you think of the Christ? And, and they said, you know, he's the son of David. And then <clears throat> then he said, oh, how could David in the spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make these, thy enemies a footstool. And then Jesus said, if David called him Lord, how is he his son? And then Jesus, when he quoted it, seems to be saying, I could be misunderstanding it, but he seems to be saying, if the Messiah is divine, he cannot be the descendant of King David. So I'm not sure if that's the right way to interpret Matthew 22. But that's what, he, that's what Jesus seems to be saying. This is the, um, probably the second most quoted verse in all of Tanakh in the, by the Christian Bible. Christian Bible quotes this a lot. It comes up a lot. I mean, let's do an experiment together. Let's open up Matthew 22, verse 44. Let's do that. Let's do it together. Let's do the forensics on. 
Okay, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pause it as we go here. Right now, I want to continue to play it, but we're really gonna have to and, and just you know, it's a 17 minute video, so it's not super long. But we're gonna we're gonna digest this as we go. And like I said, Tovia does make some very valid points, but we're gonna have to make some corrections in here. So let's just first continue on. This I want you to see this. I want you to understand that I don't care what translation you use. I want you to look it up. Matthew 22, 44. It's not the only place it's quoted quite a bit in the Christian Bible, but we'll do that. So Matthew 22, 44 says, In any Christian Bible, the Lord said to my Lord. They're identical. So if David, these Jews are being here, said that the Lord, God, said to my Lord, who then is David's Lord? The point is, that could only be Christ. Sit at my right hand to make your enemies unfaithful. You got it? So David, we are told, is speaking. And David is saying, the Lord God spoke to my Lord. And it's capital L, Lord God. It's in the Greek. So you're drowning, drowning unless you go back to the original song. If you don't read Hebrew, you're fried. Fried, you're finished. So as it turns out, the Hebrew doesn't reflect this at all. The Hebrew says, L'david mizmor num Hashem la'adoni. So the first Lord, which is the fourth word, L'david mizmor num Hashem. So there it's Yud K Vav K. It's the Tetragrammaton. It's the Shem Hashem. It's the uneffable name of God, which only could mean HaKodesh Baruch Only. And then the next word, that means the fifth Hebrew. So if you can't, let's say you can't read Hebrew, a stitch of Hebrew. So remember, Hebrew is from right to left. English is from left to right, So, in case you don't know. So Psalm 110, verse 1. It's really, even if you don't read Hebrew, if you don't read Hebrew, just open up your browser to Psalm 110, verse 1. That's all you need to do. And look at the fourth word. It's Yud, and then a He, then a Vav, then a He. We don't ever say that name. And someone tells you to say it, don't listen to them. But you see that word. That's the name of Hashem. Okay, it's called the Shem Hashem, the name of God, the ineffable, that's the Tetragrammaton. Now go to the fifth word. Let's say you can't read a stitch of Hebrew, but you could see shapes, because the fifth word is La Adoni. It's totally different. It happens to have five letters in it. Now, how odd. In the Christian Bibles, the word is the same, Lord and Lord. And in the Hebrew Bible, it's two in entirely different words. If you live in Eretz Israel, if you live in the Holy Land, you know exactly what Adoni means. Why? Because Adoni means, it technically means my master. Okay? But in Israel, it's conversational Hebrew. Was it Adoni, Adoni, Adoni? If you're going to the guy in the bakery and you want to order a bread, you call him Adoni. What you do? You say, Adoni, please... Adoni means, it means my man, but it just doesn't mean God. It's a way of just respectful. It's not falling on the floor. Adoni, there are people who are wicked in the Bible who someone addresses as Adoni. The one thing about Adoni is it does not mean Hashem ever, ever. Now be careful. You could change the vowels around and then it can mean God or it might not. But Adoni Okay, now let's just pause here for a moment. Tovia is saying if you be careful because if you change the vowels around, it could mean God. Well, what if someone else changed the vowels around to make it sound like, well, my Lord only or sir as he's implying here. And that's not what God meant in the first place to begin with. So that can go both ways. Now, but let's just back up for a moment, though, because Tovia is saying you have to go back to the original. Well, even Greek, though, is older. The Greek transcripts that we have are older than the Masoretic text, if you wanted to argue that point. 
but I'm not really here to argue that point in the first place. I do get where Tovia is coming from, but let's go to the Matthew here that I have, and the English translation that I have, as he points out, the word Lord and Lord are the same, with one exception here. He's using a translation where it's lowercase o-r-d, and in the uh, one I'm using, King James Bible Online, they use all capitals uh, for the word Lord, and any times they use all capital, it is because the tetragrammaton is used in the Old Testament, the yod heh vav -Hey. Now, I'll actually, I'm going to spell it out for the sake of Tovia here. Uh, I normally don't have a problem with pronouncing this name because, one, nobody really knows the right way to pronounce it in the first place. Uh, but for the sake of argument, we'll say yod heh vav -Hey. So, but his argument, though, is that in the Greek, it's the same. Now, as far as the Greek words, it is the same. And I will agree with Tovia on that. But as I've said before, and this is for you, Tovia, here, uh, you got to remember Matthew never wrote in the Greek language. He wrote in the Hebrew language. And the Jewish people actually preserve what we call the Shem Tov's Hebrew gospel right here. Uh, and I actually have, I, I did also did it as a photograph so I could highlight it for you to be able to see it a little bit better here. I highlighted where uh, Jesus is speaking here, where it would have been written. And, and there again, this is not the original either that Matthew wrote. This is only a copy of a copy of a copy right on down, etc. But in this particular one, verse 44, as Jesus quotes it, as it is written, the Lord said, uh, said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet. All right. Now, of course, in their English translation of Shem Tov's, which it wasn't Matthew that wrote that. That's just Shem Tov that translated this to English. Uh, he also uses the two lowercase or capital L-O-R-Ds and lo lowercase O-R-Ds as well. But in the Hebrew language, it doesn't even say that. In the Hebrew language, it actually, he uses high, which is a, that is one of the ways that they would uh, say or, or, or would use the name, uh, the divine name, yod heh vav -Heh, without saying it. They would just spell it, he yod yod to imply that it was the divine name of God. Ladonai, now he does use an additional Vav in there, which is nothing wrong with that. Shev la yamina. Od asit aviyadecha hadaom. Okay, so he says, you know, he say he says unto, you know, he said as it says here, as it is written, and it is dachateav naum. Okay, as it is written, the Lord, but Jesus clearly is actually right there in the orange as you look on your screen. There, he is saying the divine name, the Yod Heh Vav Heh. He's saying, you know, so he's saying, it is, as it is written, yod heh vav -Hey, to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Now, for one, we know only the Mashiach will sit on the right hand of the Father. And that's the word I'll use in there, the Father instead, because we know that the yod heh vav -Hey represents the Father. All right, so that's the first clarification, Toby. I want to make sure you're aware of that as well. In the Hebrew Matthew, there is that distinction going back to the original. All right, now, however, as you go back and we look at this too, um, in the, let's see, Psalm right here, um, now, we just have here, Naum, uh, uh, Naum, uh, Yorhe Vavhe, Laruni, Shev, Layamini, okay? And, and he doesn't actually say the way Jesus says it over here in the Hebrew Matthew. He just has the Naum on there. Uh, and, and of course, he does say Naum as well, but he includes in there the words there, you know, as it is written, or as it is written, it says, uh, actually, you know, yod heh vav -Hey, to, uh, for the, uh, to, to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. So that, just for the clarification, the Hebrew Matthew actually has it accurate. 
okay? So there's no mistake on that. Matthew, I've showed you this in previous videos that we do about Tobias Singer, clearly identifying the early church fathers all unanimously said that, that Matthew wrote in the Hebrew dia dialect of that day. All right, so let's, let's first correct that. Now let's continue on. Never means it. Now, here's the question. People go, oh, it's Masoretic text. Don't let them play games ahead. Why does the word Adoni, why is that word translated as Lord, capital L, there, but everywhere else with that exact word, with that exact composition, with that exact... Everywhere else, it's lowercase l. I want to know the answer. I want an answer now. I want to know why the scam. Okay, he calls it a scam, and he wants an answer now. All right, Toby, I'm going to give you an answer now because you're wrong. All we have to do is go to the Dead Sea Scrolls. As he mentions with that composition. Now, what is, what is Toby talking about when he's talking about the composition? What he's talking about is the fact that you have the divine name, then Ladoni, Shev, La Yemina, okay, you know, the, you know, sit on my right hand. But it's really this composition right here that he's talking about. That you would have, the Lord saith unto my Lord. Now he's trying to make it look like it's not really meaning that that is God right there, uh, that that he's just totally making it appear that that's not the case. But yet even the context of the sentence clearly shows that, that Tovi is wrong on that. The fact that he would sit at his right hand, that, that should tell you something in the first place. Now he's going to argue in a few moments, though, the fact of La David Mismor, that to David it's a song, in other words, it wasn't David saying, it's not Mizmor la David, which is what you normally see, but in this case, it's la David Mizmor. So to David, there was a song given. And we're going to get into that in just a moment too, and that's going to amaze you why it is written that way. But, Tovia says he wants an answer now. Okay, let's give Tovia an answer now. Let me find the right one for you. Here we go right here. Here's your composition, Tovia. This here is, uh, it's in a morning and evening prayer in the Dead Sea Scrolls, okay? And in the, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls right here, and I just took time to take and do some research in the Dead Sea Scrolls to look for some of these compositions here. And there you have Adonai, all right? So you have yod heh vav -Heh, Ata Adonai, okay? So yod heh vav -Heh, or Father, you are God, now, the Lamed is not there because it's not using the word two or four in front of it. You are God, the righteous one. Bekol uh, uh You are the uh, the righteous in all your ways. Hagivod or Hagivod. You are the mighty one. So that one, pretty much, Tovia, is almost identical to what you're looking for. Okay? And then, but it's not only there. We also have biblical ones as well. Let me find the right one. That's just a mentioning of, of Lebanon. Uh, Yedea et Adonai uh, Elohai. This one here. They know the Lord God. Okay. This one here is from, uh, wait a minute. Let me go to, that's a, a pseudo jubilees. Uh, this one is from the, the book of Isaiah. Hine uh, Adonai Me'ela. Uh, Behold, the Lord will bring up against them. And again, the spelling is the exact same. Now, we don't have the Lamed there because it's not using the word four or two uh, because clearly David it was having to give to the Lord. All right? So, and then we have also from, uh, let's see here. I may have deleted my own one that I had up here. Uh, this one here. This is one. This is from Is. No, 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 it's not. Okay. I may have. There's another one that's from Isaiah chapter 8. And I don't know if it was this one or not. But anyway, uh, again, though, it is. this one's from Isaiah anyway there. 
and it shows that same form. So the Adonai, but there's no vowels there to distinguish as, as what uh, Tovia is saying. So, you know, so just, you know, it's, it's, it's a, mu a moot argument. You know, the problem is the rabbis, 700 years afterwards, decide because they don't like Jesus quoting this to put the vowels in there to make it, give it a different meaning. And that's what it really comes down to. Let's listen a little bit more. And why the fake? Why are you playing with me? Why are you doing this to me? Genesis 24, verse 56, as an example, describing the marriage of Yitzchak and Rivka. Has it in? Shalchuni l'elcho l'adoni. Send me away so I can go to my master. Why do all, all the King Jameses, all the Christy Bibles there find the word master lowercase m or lowercase l or lowercase lowercase. It's the same exact word, exact same word. Now, if you don't want to look it up because you like being a Christian, then why are you watching this? When go, then I know Christianity, you feel better, you don't want to kill yourself anymore, you stop smoking, Jesus spoke to you, fine. If that's your just feels, don't listen to me, don't. If you look it up, so the church has altered the text, why? Because they want you to think they're the same. It's going to get darker, we're not done yet. Who is speaking here? So this is, we're going to have fun now. We're going to have fun. If you read Hebrew, you'll see it immediately, and if you don't read Hebrew... You'll see it if you could just recognize the shapes of letters. And I think for every person listening to my voice right now, watching me right now, this will be new to you. So what is like the most famous psalm? It may be, the Lord is my shepherd. So let's do that for a moment. So this is hot. This is pure heat. Pure heat. I'm going to give you a moment to open up Psalm 23, verse 1 on one browser and Psalm 110, verse 1 on another browser. And Why? here it is. Well, does you want to see the this word one here? Sin? He's going to talk about Mizmor la David. How does Psalm 23 begin? Mizmor la David, a song of David. Hashem roi, the Lord is my shepherd. Lo yechzer. And therefore, I don't like it. Now, by the way, I want you to notice something here. Mizmola David, he says Hashem, because it's the He Yod. What did I tell you over here when, when Jesus is quoted in the Hebrew gospel there? And actually, I have, let me go to the highlighted one. It'll be a little bit better for you. Okay, and that would be 44. We're going to the word in orange. They just used two yods instead of one. So Tovia has just confirmed what I was sharing with you earlier. That was a way of doing the divine name. And, and there again, this is Shem Tov writing it, uh, or it's what they call Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew. Uh, it's about, I think it's about 500 year old document, something to that effect there. So they were copying Matthew's writings down through time, saving them. So it could have been the rabbis that were copying it that decided to take out the divine name. Maybe Matthew did write the divine name. We don't really know the answer to that. Okay, that is something we don't know the answer to. But nonetheless, it does use the same way. So Tovia is confirming that, that it is, as he said, Hashem, which means the name. Um, and that's exactly what Jesus was saying through Matthew, the prophet, or through Matthew, his apostle, uh, when he's quoting Jesus. So it's perfectly in line with what we have in the Masoretic text as well. Let's continue on, though. Because he's going to get into this one issue there, and I love this because I, I can't wait to share this with you as well. Mizmor le David, a song of David. Hashem roi, the Lord is my shepherd. 
Loyechzer, and therefore I don't lack anything. Okay, you know this one. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Okay? Now here's we're gonna watch this, okay? So watch what's gonna happen. Listen. Listen, and we're going high, very high. This is how a child of Hashem gets high. So again, how does this chapter begin? Mizmor Ludovid. What does Mizmor Ludovid mean? A song of David. A song of David. So David is the author. He composed it. Mizmor Ludovid. It means a song of David. I mean, David is speaking, and in fact, Told this you, chapter, I love it. as gonna, the chapter He's stepping into this one and don't know it. King David is the author. So it's a song, a pericope of David. Okay, he composes a song of David. Okay, look very carefully at Psalm 110, verse 1, and I would like you to tell me how is it different. You got it. It's the exact reverse. Psalm 110 begins with Ludovid Mizmor. It reverses it. I never noticed that before. Now, look at the translations. Do they reverse it too? No, they don't. Trouble. What is the difference, my friends, between Mizmor Ludovid, Psalm 23, and Ludovid Mizmor. Now, those of you who speak Hebrew know exactly what the difference is. Now, he's going to show you the of and the word too, because you got to remember, Hebrew has a lot of different ways to translate the same thing. So the letter Lamed in there, which is right here, uh, over here, let's say if you look at Psalm 110.1, the Lamed is in front of the word David, okay, David's name there. So it's Lamed David Mizmor. Then over here is Mizmor La David, but it's still a Lamed. Uh, but it does have a different, you translate it a little bit different. Now they do put on there, like he has, a Psalm of David, Psalm 23. But over here, of David, a Psalm. Okay? Hmm. Interesting. A da uh, of David, a Psalm. Listen to what he says, and then I'm going to show you what it really is. David Mizmor. Now, those of you who speak Hebrew know exactly what the difference is. They're reversed. What does that convey? Because you ain't going to find out in the translation. They, for some reason, don't think there's a reason, there is any reason at all to convey this reversal. What is that reversal? One is Mizmor David, the most famous psalm, The Lord is My Shepherd. That's a very holy psalm. That's a very famous psalm. And Psalm 110 doesn't say Mizmor Ludovid, but rather the David Mizmor. What is the David Mizmor? I just reversed it. You won't know from your King James. The David Mizmor means to David a song. Whoa. That means who is singing this? Not David. That's right. It's not Mizmor it's Ludovid, not David a song singing. of David. So it. what is conveyed in Matthew 22 is a lie. And the lie is fueled not by lie, ignoring though, this. Okay. Mizmor Ludovid means a song of David. Means David is the author. But Lidovid Mizmor means to David. Who are the singers in the Beis Hamikdash? The Levim, the Levites, the great... Incorrect. Now that part is incorrect in there. All right. Tovia, I hope this helps you. I really do. Um, I, and, I, and I say that sincerely. I really hope this will help you. He's right in what he's saying here when he talks about that they're reversed. By the way, this is part of where they've hacked my computer system, so I apologize about that. Uh, I haven't got this thing changed over. It's messing up everything. It is reversed. But, like he said, now, instead of saying of David a psalm, he's saying to David a psalm or a song whichever way you want to put it. One's being sung to David. The other one, David is doing the singing, a psalm of David. And like I said, they're, they're translating the Lama differently. Now, when he did the little thing on, the, on his diagram, he keeps it still the word of, but he says to David a song because you can do it that way. It's not a problem. There's nothing wrong with what he did on that. But that's true. 
And it has to be that way. That's what Jesus pointed out to you. Come on, Tobia. You want to talk about getting high? Get high on the revelation of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit revealing it to you. That's the true high. It's not because you know the vowels or you know the Hebrew. Oh, my gosh. This is, all right, let's go back now. Let me take you. I'm going to take you to the Hebrew, Matthew, because I just love it better there. Okay. Ve'yomer lahem echa kora oto David baruch hakodesh baruch hakodesh lemor adon. Okay. Now, Tobia, you get what I just read already. All right. <laughs> Come on. This is the whole point. He's right. David always composed the songs. This time the song is to David. All right? It's, 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 it is reversed. Why? Jesus is giving you the revelation of it already. And it's, and it's literally written right there in the King James as well. It's no different. He said to them, How is it that David by the Holy Spirit called him, saying, Lord? It's the Holy Spirit that gave David the psalm. So, Tobi, you're right on that. It is reversed, but Jesus is the one revealing to you what the reversal was for and who's the one that actually gave it to him. And that's why it is reversed. That's why, like you said, you take the most famous Psalm, Psalm 23, and it's the other way around. Okay? Just like you point out in your video right there, right? Psalm 23, Mismo la David. Okay? A Psalm of David. In other words, David's composing the psalm. But in Psalm 110.1, when David is talking about the Mashiach who's going to sit at his right hand, it is the Holy Spirit that gives David the song. To David a psalm. It was God revealing to him that the Mashiach, the Lord, was going to sit at his right hand. And Jesus knew it. He revealed it. And so you're, you know, told you, you got so, you get so caught up in these things, my friend, and you're missing, you're missing some of the most important, most beautiful passages of all. And granted, hey, I get it. Maybe the Greek has got some things messed up. I can understand that. And in Greek, it does use, uh, I think it's, what is it, Kyrios or something like that. Let me just pull that up real fast. Uh, no, I don't even have it open here. Let's see, Esword. That, that's a quick way to do it there. We'll just look at it real fast. Uh, so, what is it, uh, Matthew? Um, ba, 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 ba. Here we go, Matthew 22. And, he, and like I said, he says it right here, though, in Matthew 22. Saying, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He says unto them, how then doth David in the spirit call him Lord? Now he just says, in the spirit, call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. But now in the King James, they do use all the caps L-O-R-D. Okay, which is Hashem. But you're right, in the Greek, it's not like that. So let's let's go quickly over there. I'll grab over here in the um, Matthew, where are we at? 22. Okay. Um, let's see what verse we're in. Okay, down to 43, 44 area. Okay. So see, and there again, even in East Sword, it's all capital L-O-R-D, which that means they're implying that it is Hashem. Okay, it is yod heh vav -Heh. It's the Father there. All right, in other words, the Father said unto my Lord, sit you on my right hand. Now it does, like you said, 2962, Kyrios, that's right, Kyrios in both cases. For the Greek, it uses Kyrios. But the but but in in reality, it's not a, a big issue because it was God. It's not represented as Sir or like you know like you're trying to bring out though, Toby. I mean, and face it, sit down on my right hand. Who else is going to be on the right hand of God except the Mashiach? It's nobody else. 
Uh, I mean, that should be obvious in itself. But the whole point, and going back to the Hebrew Matthew, let me just take you back there again. This is what's so beautiful. Ve'yomer lahem echa koro, excuse me, kore oto, all right? And, and he said to them, how calls uh, to him David, oto, David, Baruch HaKodesh. In the Spirit, in the whole, in the, the, you know, he did it by the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't even David composing the song. This is where Jesus clearly is showing you that the Holy Spirit gave to David this psalm or the revelation of the psalm. That's why it got reversed, Tovia. That's what's so beautiful about this. Le mort adon. All right. Saying, why did, why did, because the Holy Spirit gave him the psalm. And he says to him, Lord. Then he goes on. And, uh, uh, the Kadav Naum, Yodhe or Father, or Hashem, however you want to, I'm just, I'm for your sake, I'm doing that, Tovia. Ladonai Shev Leyamini. Od Asit. Okay. Lord, sit on my right, uh, my right until I make your, your enemy your footstool. So David is calling him God. And as I proved to you as well, that is, and it is in the biblical passage as well. No, not. And, and yes, I get what Tovia is saying when Tovia says that, uh, uh, you know, that this is, uh, how does Tovia put that there? He's, you know, it, you know, it's used as master, like, you know, uh, Adoni, things like that. Sure, I get that. I, I'm, I don't have a problem with that. But it's, in, it's the way the context of this is written. And like I said, if you go to the Dead Sea Scrolls, I can show you over and over and over. This one here being the closest one to what you were talking about when you demanded now, right? The now, got to have it now. Okay, well, you got it now. And this was in the morning and the evening prayer where the Yod Hevavdehe Ata Adonai HaTzadik You are God the Righteous. Adon Alef Dalet Nun Yod In the blue right there on the page there. And if you wanted a biblical one as well I give you uh, Isaiah right here Hine, hine Adon, uh, Adonai Ma'ale alayahem et me. Okay, behold, the Lord will bring up against them. What are you gonna, how are you gonna, how are you gonna get around it then? It is used consistently as God. And even like I showed you in this one right here, uh, back one more time, here we go there, with the divine name of God, Ata Adonai. You are God, or you are the Lord. You can translate it, Lord, whichever way you, the Lord, the righteous. They did it back 2,000 years ago, Tovia. So, and like I said, Jesus in the Hebrew Matthew also clearly quoted it the way you have it in the Masoretic text. Very similar, right? And then going into verse 45, if David called him Lord, how is he his son? Im David kore adon echa yahi beno. Then how is it that he is his son? I hope that really sinks in. And I hope you really got that part there that it was the beruach uh, hakodesh. David said it in the Holy Spirit, which answered Tovia's argument right there about the, as he puts here, La David Mizmor. To David was a psalm because it was the Holy Spirit that gave it to him. It didn't, no, it doesn't come from the Levites. I know it would be nice to say that, but that was the whole point Jesus was bringing it. Jesus showed you where it came from. 
I think he would have known a little bit more about the Tanakh, about the writings, uh, you know, uh, you know, whether it be the Kotavim or the Navim or the Torah. I think he knew a lot more about it than what we would know today. So anyway, I hope this blesses you guys. And uh, Toby, I hope it helps you as well. I really do. Um, you know, you've been pretty tough on believers. And you've slammed the Bible. You slammed Paul. And there's a lot of them on Paul that you slammed that I'll have to deal with eventually. Can't do them all because you're so, you do them on such a regular basis. But maybe it will cause you to go back and search yourself. And those of you that listen to Tovia Singer, Maybe these, uh, this is the fourth one now, but as I put these together, maybe it'll make you think as well where you've been stumbled in your faith. Because I guarantee you, everyone that you're dealing with, there's a right answer. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support of our work that we do here. God bless you.